Welcome back to the thrift shop. Today, we're going to talk about the FIO CP13 personal cassette tape player. All right, it has been a long time. I still have cassettes. I grew up through vinyl, through cassettes, through CDs. No spring chicken here. So we got to talk about the FIO CP13, newly released cassette player. I've resisted, okay? I've seen a few boutique manufacturers out there. But when I heard, maybe this is just rumor, the FIO was getting Sony to help design this unit, I said, okay, I got in. I actually reached out to um, a distributor for FIO and they couldn't even get their hands on it. So I, I did go direct to FIO, got the earlier bird special, which includes this leatherette case. Um, I don't know if it's synthetic, uh, vegan, or whatever you want to call it case, but Sky Blue does come with a case. And we're gonna obviously talk about all the functions. So, uh, with that, what we get here is pretty simplistic of a design, all aluminum, uh, which is nice. At least it feels all aluminum, um, anodized aluminum. Um, so, nice build. Um, cosmetically, very pleasing. Uh, so, you get play, reverse, fast forward, stop, not much. You don't get an auto um, switch to the other side. A little bit of a bummer there. You do get a, a volume knob here. Um, off to, to max, so it's it's not really on until you press play. Um, you do get a power in, USB-C power in, and a status light, so um, unfortunately you don't know how much power you have in this unit. So one drawback is it doesn't give you a number of bars or a number of blinking lights. It's just you plug it in and it's red. So you're going to have to charge this and have no idea how much power you have. And you get a 3.5 millimeter headphone out. To open it up, um, you have to use this corner right here. It's not easy. There's a lot of resistance, and you really have to dig your nail to get that open. So I wish it was more of a, a kind of a two-pull system, maybe. Because um, it is not easy to open. It's a simplistic, you know, kind of a neat design. But uh, in practicality, it's not that great. Um, so let's talk about the case that was provided. So it's a little bit of a uh, case origami going on here. So you do get a magnetic back side and you get a magnetic swinging end. Okay, which is kind of neat. So you can slide this in just like this. It's closed, closed, so it's, it's kind of neat. It's kind of protective. Um, you know, it feels nice. It looks nice. The problem is, you go to switch a tape to the other side, you have to do that all over. So, I think they should have gone for something where the the cassette door that opens somehow um, use some magnets or, well, you don't want magnets close to your tape. Um, so, something they should have done better just so you could open the door and close it. And, yeah. Uh, anyways, it does look nice, but um, kind of unpractical to use in, in reality. Um, it is what it is. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Um, it is kind of nice, but it's not very practical for a use standpoint. So, everyone wants to know, does this thing sound great? Um, have you listened to a tape lately? You? I'm looking at you. Have you listened to a cassette tape lately? Um, I... Obviously, I have a lot of, from my childhood, a lot of tapes, overly worn out. 
it's not fair to use something that old, that worn out, something I use so much, and to talk about sound. And uh, so I got something new. Yeah, don't jump out of your seats. Uh, Ice Nine Kills, great band. They were the, the, the um, one of the bands that went out with Metallica for 72 seasons this year. And um, I've, I've met them when they were just getting started. Absolutely fell in love with their music. It's a horror music, horror film um, based, so theme based, based on horror movies. Uh, this is the Silver Scream 2. Absolutely love it. Um, they have some deluxe albums out now. Um, beautiful gold tape. Um, really cool. Stylish. And it's the music I like. And it's new. And um, so, yeah, playing it in here. Um, again, it's so hard to open. Um, looks cool. Um, first thing we got to do before we get to sound is listen to the sound of this. Hopefully, you'll be able to hear this. So this thing is not the quietest of units. Obviously, I grew up with this. Once you're listening to music, it's not a problem. It's just so you're going to have this either in this or you're going to be sitting somewhere listening to headphones and someone's going to be looking at you saying, what is that whirling noise? Why is that thing so loud? So definitely not a lot of damping materials in here. The mechanism itself is, well, it's loud. So you're going to have to get over that point. Um, we're going to have to talk about kind of headphone pairing. I could not find out any specs on this of the output power of the amplifier that's in here. So, um, some of the things that we have to talk about here. Um, so, obviously I started off with uh, IEMs, which I do think, in the end, IEMs are the best to pair with the FIO CP13. Um, I was using the, um, the the Magic One Awful, AFL, I call them Awful, Awful, uh, Magic One. This is a single uh, balanced armature uh, IEM. $140 on sale for $120. Um, oh, by the way, I got this for $100. I think it's going for $120, somewhere right around that range retail. I did get the early bird special. Um, so about the equivalent price of this IEM. And it's a good match. This is about 30 ohms. It's actually a little bit harder to drive than most IEMs, but still within the realm of being easy to drive. Didn't have a problem whatsoever with this um, and I think with this unit you really have to pay attention to uh, the impedance of your headphones because of the noise that's coming out via the tape so if you go too low impedance you're going to get a higher sound floor too much impedance while you're deadening the sound floor um, you don't have much power to drive if that makes sense so um, I started off with the FIO uh, FT3 350 ohm unit you know these are pretty hard to drive um, they're great for two bands like the dark voice here but um yeah i would say i was getting these up to maybe 50 db i mean right as you started to crank up um the volume knob i mean the, the sound was there but it did not increase whatsoever so 350 ohms not the greatest even though there was a very low noise floor so too much so that tells you kind of the limitation 350 ohm not going to work that great, but it's good for the noise floor. Went the other direction with Ferrum Audio. Um, I believe these are around 8 ohms, so very low impedance, planar magnetics. Um, certainly could get these loud enough, um, but uh, these do take a lot of power just because of the low impedance. Um, and um, the noise floor is quite high, so not a good idea to go to low impedance or high impedance. So your best bet is to go with something standard in the realm of kind of headphones. So I chose to go with the drop KPH 30i or 40i. Um, these are the drop costs. And you can go with any of the KPH 30i. Um, go with whatever you got. Um, if it is pretty much 32 ohm to, you know, 100 ohms, it's going to work great. Um, these got plenty loud. Sounded great. 
Um, the one thing with uh, this, if you've been around cassettes, if you look at some of the older um, cassette tape decks, maybe, um, or older pieces of equipment, you will have a no Dolby noise reduction. That brought down the noise floor quite a bit. That went out the window whenever the CDs came in, but it would have been nice to have a Dolby uh, noise reduction button on here to bring that noise floor down and just make music fine. Keep in mind when you're playing with your music, playing your music, the noise floor, you really don't hear it. Uh, it's between songs or in quiet parts of songs. It's the only time it's going to be a problem for you. Otherwise, um, it's a nice unit, you know, for a hundred bucks. Um, who knows how long it'll last. I wish, I wish it were old school and went with two AA batteries. Um, I know most things now have internal batteries, but, um, when they go, you have to throw this out. Keep in mind, this was my original tape player to go back in time. I saved up money mowing grass around town to buy this and my first cassette, which was Rush at the time, and uh, bought many more. It's real Sony Walkman. This, unfortunately, no longer works. As a kid, it broke. I took it apart, still some screws. Um, it didn't go back together well. I actually just put a new um, new uh, belt in here, and it's still not working. So I'll have to figure out what's going on with this. But um, this was back in the heyday, you know, great and uh, very popular and still is somewhat of a cult, uh, you know, a cult following, iconic kind of uh, tape player. So... Uh, again, I wish they would have went with old school and replacement batteries. Would have made sense. And, uh, yeah, so, hey, if you're thinking about buying the FIO CP13, I'll try to put a link. I'm not sure where it's being sold. Um, so I'll have to check maybe APOS, Amazon. I'll try to put a link down below. Hey, if you like this content, please just like, subscribe, help the channel grow. Greatly appreciated. Peace and take care.